Hello and welcome to Treasury Notes, a show dedicated to the latest news and information from the office of West Virginia State Treasurer John Perdue. I'm your host, Gina Joins. State Treasurer John Perdue's office is leading the nation in efforts to return millions of dollars in unclaimed property to its rightful owners. Unclaimed property can include anything from bank accounts, stocks and bonds to the contents of a safe deposit box. Coming up on today's show, we'll find out how the Treasurer's Unclaimed Property Division is putting a modern spin on an old-fashioned property auction. We'll also show you how searching for unclaimed property can be a life-changing experience. But first, let's take a look at how Treasurer Purdue's success with the Unclaimed Property Division is gaining national attention. ABC's Good Morning America recently featured a series called Show Me the Money to demonstrate how easy it is to cash in on unclaimed property. Consumer correspondent Elizabeth Leamy traveled to West Virginia to join State Treasurer John Purdue as he presented an unclaimed property check to Vicki Shaluda of St. Albans. Here is that story that aired on Good Morning America. Could money that belongs to you be in this warehouse? $161 million inside this building alone, all money that most of the right owners don't even know they have. But in our new series, Show Me the Money, Elizabeth Levy got inside and was there when one of the lucky ones was in for a big and happy surprise. Good morning, Eli. Hey, George. Yeah, we wanted to see what it feels like to be that person and also what it takes to successfully claim the money. So we tagged along with the West Virginia Treasurer's Office as they performed their version of of the prize patrol. West Virginia treasurer John Perdue is about to make somebody's day. That person is Vicki Shaluda of St. Albans, West Virginia. Vicki? Yeah. So how big is the big check he's holding? We'll show Vicki the money in a moment. But first, some background. I thought originally when I got the card from the bank, I thought this has to be wrong. Vicky's mom, Lenora Adkins, died in July of last year. She left behind dozens of handmade quilts warmed by her love. She used all kinds of different colors. And her secret recipe for making the most amazing fudge. You just stir it. That's right. That's all there is to it. Other than that, Lenora was penniless. Or so Vicky thought. So when I got a card from the bank saying that money um, had gone to unclaimed property, I was shocked because I didn't know anything else existed. These boxes hold claims like Vicky's. West Virginia processes more than 20,000 cases a year. And still, there are $161 million here waiting to be found. Lenora's mind had been lost to Alzheimer's and her money could easily have followed. Her bank had been bought out twice. All the account numbers had changed. But then a sharp-eyed BB&T banker named Cammie McCormick spotted a CD in Lenora's name, and it had been sitting there, growing. Then Cammie turned in to really a sleuth. She needed to do research. West Virginia requires banks to send unclaimed accounts to the treasurer's office after five to seven years for safekeeping. Vicki's paperwork landed on Joanne Tinsley's desk. We make sure everything matches before we hand it over to someone. You know, even if it's $50, do you want to give it to the wrong person? And Lenora's CD was a lot more than $50. At last, the state of West Virginia cut Vicki a check. It was one of the largest unclaimed property cases of the year. It's helping West Virginians, uh, you know, return their money. Their money. It's not the state's money. West Virginia is one of the most efficient, aggressive states about reuniting people with their unclaimed money and property. And every now and then, Treasurer John Perdue the likes to do it in person. And today, and we have put this check together of $14,876.55. Thank you. <laughs> What do you plan to do with that money? I think they're thinking family vacation. Oh. <laughs> so, can I come along? Yes, yes. <laughs> it's like um, a gift from mom. That's exactly how I feel about it. It's a gift. 
So you see, even if you don't think you've left any of your own money lying around, it's a good idea to search to see if deceased family members have left money for you, and we will link you to a couple of websites where you can do that and research. This is pretty common. It certainly is. I mean, have you left a list of your assets somewhere that your heirs can find it if you die? I haven't, but I will now. Uh, Allie's going to make me now. <laughs> okay, thanks very much, Eli. A big thank you to Elizabeth Leamy, Vanessa Weber, and the entire Good Morning America crew. And of course, thanks to Vicki Shaluda and her family. We had a lot of fun presenting that check. Well, to date, Treasurer Purdue's office has returned more than $100 million in unclaimed property to West Virginia businesses and individuals. Several years ago, Xavier Imperial received not one, but two checks from Treasurer Purdue, totaling more than $650,000. Recently, another six-figure recipient was added to the list of individuals benefiting from Treasurer Purdue's unclaimed property division. Xavier's brother, Frank, met with the treasurer to receive a check of his own. Here's more. We are honored that you two are here today and that uh, we've been able to return your money back to you. 88-year-old Frank Imperial now has more than $169,000 back in his hands thanks to State Treasurer John Purdue's unclaimed property program. The money comes from an expired savings account Imperial opened up back in the 40s when he was working as an accountant for a construction company. Back in those days, the salary was $64 a week. And I kept building and building, getting better and getting smarter. Frank now joins his brother Xavier as a recipient of unclaimed property. In fact, Xavier holds the record for the highest amount of unclaimed property returned to an individual with more than $655,000 returned. I believe it is a record on a national level of two brothers receiving over $800,000 in unclaimed property. As for Frank, he says he'll only spend some of the money. Well, I could invest some somewhere or get uh, uh, good, uh, good company that might uh, have uh, a good uh, yield, yielding point to pay out. For more information on West Virginia's unclaimed property program, log on to wvtreasury.com. A large number of the accounts currently being handled by the Unclaimed Property Division deal with bank accounts, stocks, bonds, and even unclaimed utility deposits. But there are hundreds of other accounts where the unclaimed property can't be returned by a written check. Those are the items found in safe deposit boxes. After several attempts are made to find the owners of those items, the treasurer has the authority to auction off the items. Joining me now to talk more about the unclaimed property program and the unclaimed property auctions are Diane Billings and Dan Reed with our unclaimed property division. Thank you both so much for being here today. Thank you. Thanks for having well, us. Well, we just showed um, some check recipients, some unclaimed property check recipients. Vicki Shaluda and her family received some money. Of course, Frank Imperial received a really nice sized check. It must make you guys feel really good to see this money going back to the rightful owners. Oh, it does. It does. It's very gratifying when you're working with them, getting all the documents together so that they can make their claim. Uh, we, we love doing it. And I'm sure when you see this video, um, you see how happy these people are, don't you? Absolutely. Uh, and not only the, the large, the recipients of large amounts of money, but even the small amounts of money, you know, can make someone's day. It's, it's having, having that return back to them. The, and, and that's a good point. I mean, when this money is returned back to unclaimed property owners, many of them don't know they have this money, but there's a wide range of the, of the amount of checks that we give back to people. It can range from a small amount of money, as you said, to, to six right. figures. Right. Yes. Talk a little bit about what each of your roles are in the unclaimed property division. Dan, we'll start with you. What exactly is your role as um, in the unclaimed property division? Uh, I actually uh, work with the receipts from the holders of, of, of monies, uh, such as banks. It could be uh, businesses uh, that have attempted to send payroll checks out to people. Uh, they've been returned and after a certain amount of time, they'll send those back into unclaimed property for us to, to try to find the owners of those monies. 
Okay, and, and Diane, you actually are a safekeeping specialist. So talk about what your primary role is in the Unclaimed Property Division. Okay, much like uh, Dan's role is receiving the money on a yearly basis from businesses, we receive the inventory from safe deposit contents. And so when the banks turn them over, we uh, compare it to their checklist, inventory them thoroughly, and put them in safekeeping and hopefully return them to their owners. Good morning America. They talked about show me the money. It's all about show me the money. And they said they had great success after that piece aired of people calling them from West Virginia and around the country talking about, okay, when can I cash in? But when we talk about unclaimed property, um, it's not always about the money, it's also about, as you said, the safe deposit box contents. Uh, talk a little bit about some of the other things that are out there for individuals to claim. Uh, the tangible items that are in contents in, in the boxes could be coins, currency, any keepsake that, that people put in a box that will fit in a box. We also get things like wills and powers of attorney, uh, that sort of thing, life insurance policies that we put in safekeeping until they are claimed. So if my grandmother put some jewelry in a safe deposit box and she never told me that it was there, how does that then end up unclaimed property? The banks, by law, uh, are reported are, are to report it after five years if there's no activity and if they can't get a hold of the customer. They make every attempt to first, then they turn it over to us so that we can advertise it. So that's how it is and then after we advertise it, our hope is that it is claimed by the owner or their heirs. We're seeing some of those items right now, all different items as you said, watches, coins, things that are really special to people. Some of them have monetary value, some of them have personal value, right? It's not always just about um, the monetary value of these items, right Dan? That's right, if you think about it, you know, the things that you might put in your safety deposit box it's not always things that are of monetary value, it's things that are important to you. Uh, and those are the things that, you know, once, once it becomes unclaimed, you know, it's turned into us. Treasurer Purdue always talks about the checks and balances of the system we have in place now at Unclaimed Property. And there really is a concerted effort to make sure that this doesn't become unclaimed property until a rightful owner it has been, we've tried to contact that rightful owner, correct? Talk about that process of just making sure that this really, you know, the rightful owner cannot be found. Before the companies, whether they be banks or, or whatever, that turns over any unclaimed property to, to us, they do what is called due diligence, where it is their responsibility to send letters to the owner at the last to know an address they have. I know that a lot of companies, banks especially go beyond that if they know family or heirs and really try to contact because that once it's turned over to us it, some people uh, may not ever see it again but that but our goal is to advertise it so they will see it and recently we had an unclaimed property bulletin released in newspapers around the state it broke down for you who was on that list that was supposed to receive money and who had safe deposit box items um, in the list. So people could look through that list. They can also go to our website, wvtreasury.com, to see if they have unclaimed property, which may be, again, money, or it could be these items that we're talking about in safe deposit boxes. Talk about um, once the bank says, okay, we've done our due diligence, we've tried to contact the owners, it's been five or more years now, and we've had no activity on this account, then where do those items go to? They are sent in to us with a very detailed list of what items were in the box. Uh, we receive them and, and compare what we check in to the bank and inventory them and put them in our system and put them in a secure location so that when they are claimed we, we can access them e easily and get them to their owner. And they are available to their owners. Um, up until the time they are possibly auctioned off. And that's what we want to talk about today because we are getting, we had just launched the online auction for unclaimed property. This is really exciting for us because by state law, the treasurer does have the authority to auction off these items periodically because we just can't 
you can't keep everything indefinitely, right? There's just not right. enough space <laughs> out there to keep all of these tangible items locked up forever. So what the treasurer does is he's able to periodically do auctions, and then it's important to note, I think, that all that money is kept for those people. They can then keep that money um, until the rightful owner comes forward, right? It, it's there indefinitely, is that correct? That is correct. So after the period of time and it is auctioned, they will just have money in the place of tangible items. This is the exciting part, talking about these online auctions. In the past, the treasurer has done auctions that uh, have been physical auctions, and they've been very, very successful, but we are in a virtual world, so to speak, now, and people are always logging online. You hear about eBay and several other auction sites all the time. So, Dan, talk a little bit about why the decision was made to now put these items up for bid online and, and where we go from here. The online auction gives people worldwide. We have a, a, a vast arena of people able to bid on these items now. Therefore, uh, you know, with the, the, the uh, auction companies, um, actually, um, um, they're, they're really able to, to get it out there to everybody, as yes, you said. They authenticate, authenticate the, the merchandise, uh, they uh, appraise it, and um, we we're able to get more money out of the items through these online auctions. Uh, collectors and, and specialists all over, all over the world are able to bid on them, and therefore we get more money for the owners of the property or their heirs. I think that's probably one of the biggest benefits to putting these items online because ultimately the the goal is to make sure that the people who are due this money, those rightful owners or the heirs of these items, they receive top dollar that's for correct. their items. Mm -hmm. So when they come back when when you know great granddaughter comes back and says my great grandmother had this ring in the safe deposit box you don't have it anymore but I, I'd like to claim that money from the auction I'm sure there's some satisfaction in knowing that you've tried to get top dollar for those items there is and, and that is probably the number one benefit of these on, online auctions is that we feel we can get an even higher return rate because it's a, we, reaching a, a wider audience and uh, this the company that we, we deal with, that's their specialty, and they know how to lot the items and, and to do everything to get them the maximum profit. And you talked about the company that's um, that we're using, Lone Star, is the auction firm. You may see them at the top of the page. We're actually looking at video right now when you log on to the website. and lots of different items up for bid, watches, a lot of coins and collectibles. I think there's, um, for West Virginians who are also interested in those antiques and those different items, this is a good opportunity for you to cash in as well. That's correct, and there is a, wide, a variety of items. Uh, there's coins and jewelry in almost all of them, but we get everything from flatware and antique um, little figurines. So that there is just a variety for, for everyone's interests. And I want to be sure that we direct people to the right website. They can go to wvtreasury.com if they would like to learn more information about unclaimed property or if they'd like a link to the uh, auction website. But they can also go straight to westvirginiaunclaimedproperty.org and that will get them straight to the auction if they're just eager to start bidding. That's correct. Talk about the process of bidding. Do you have some information on what people need to do if they are interested in on bidding on these items? They will need to go to uh, the Lone Star website and they will need to uh, actually sign up as a bidder. It's a very short process. Uh, it takes about five minutes um, and they won't need to leave a credit card information or any of that. They'll pay uh, if they're a successful bidder, they'll pay via check or money order at the end of the auction. And this, as you said, is a pretty simple process if they'd like to bid. But to look at the items, you really don't have to yeah, do anything. Don't have to sign up you for can just things. log on. Now, the length of the of how long the items are going to be available. The auctions are periodic. They'll be held periodically throughout the okay. year. Um, I think the goal is that we're going to have about 650 lots available over the next year. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That is correct. Talk about um, the length of these auctions and how that's going to work. They generally run 14 days is what uh, 
the usual time is. They are on a continual basis. That doesn't mean there might be a gap when, when we have a few days that there's not one. But the size of the auctions will be relatively the same. You're not going to have one, one auction with 20 items and one auction with 100. They uh, consistently put the same amount of lots on there. So we're excited about that, that, that people get the same fair shake no matter what auction they're looking at. The first auction we did, there were, I think, 50-some lots available. Many of them were coins and watches. And as you said, the auctions are going to go up on a continual basis, but if you log on to the website and it just so happens that there's no auction available at that time, don't worry because right. you have the option to go back and, and keep checking to make sure there's a new auction because there will be a new one eventually. That's correct, yes. Yeah, I think that's important to know because you don't want people to be alarmed if they log on and they see that there's no auction currently right. going on. Eventually there will be one. It's just as the items are sent in and they're cataloged, that's correct? That's correct, yes. And we do wait before these I items go up for auction, it's not immediately once the safe deposit box items end up in the hands of unclaimed property that they immediately go to auction, right? Oh, that's correct. We advertise them and then we maintain them in our, in our vault to give the owners an opportunity to claim the tangible items. It's the older things that will be auctioned first. Are there extra fees involved in this auction? Um, I know that there are sometimes some extra fees involved when you're dealing with online auctions. There are buyer's fees that are involved and it's a very minimal buyer's fee. Okay. Um, again, we want to remind people if they want to check out unclaimed property, they should go to wvtreasury.com. Also, if they're interested in just going straight to the online auction, they can go to westvirginiaunclaimedproperty.org. Um, takes them directly there, but they can also access it from the state treasurer's website as well. Once the auction is op over, then what happens to that money? Well, it comes back to us to be put in the account of, of the owners that had tangible items to begin with. So the value of all the items will be returned when a claim is made at that point. Let's talk a little bit about um, those claims. Once those claims are filed, whether it be money from an, a safe deposit box item that was put up for auction, whether it's money from an expired savings account or an expired CD account, something like that. How do people claim that money? Let's just talk about that process for a few minutes. Well, they can claim online uh, under certain stipulations. If it's an individual claim, if you have money in your name and you have a West Virginia driver's license, you can make your claim online at the same website, uh, wvtreasury.com. For more detailed, if it's an estate or a business, you print a claim form out, follow the instructions, which are simple, to uh, and where to mail it in. And it takes a, just a minimal amount of time for your claim to be processed and your money returned. Now, sometimes you might have to actually fill out a little bit of paperwork to get this money, but um, in the end, it's it's worth it if it's oh, yours. Yes. If it's your money, right? As we saw earlier, some people might be able to cash in on a six-figure check. I mean, what, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> I can't imagine. I keep that. checking the website. <laughs> Unfortunately, my name does not show up. I just keep hoping that somewhere along the line I've misplaced money. And that's a really, you know, interesting point. Uh, I feel like I'm someone who takes pride in, in keeping track of everything, but even if you're really organized, there's always the possibility that you could have unclaimed property because it's very easy to um, maybe even not misplace money, but maybe it was um, a utility that you put a payment down on and then you moved and right. you never got that money back. What are some of the other interesting ways you could have unclaimed property and not know it? Uh, some of the very old life insurances that were sold a long time ago when people went door to door and grandma and grandpa bought the, the child a policy and they didn't know and the addresses have changed and, and they just never got back. That's one of the main ways. Uh, rebate checks and maybe you've moved and you didn't know it was coming to you so it's not something you're missing so it does, you know that sort of thing. 
And Dan, you're fairly new with the office. Just talk about your experience so far working with Unclaimed Property Division. Treasurer Purdue has really taken the Unclaimed Property Division from just one or two people when he first came to office to now um, a very, very professional office that's returning as we said, millions of dollars back to the people of West Virginia. Well, as you said, we're one of the leaders in the country in returning un unclaimed property to the rightful owners or their heirs. And, uh, you know, our, at our office daily, there are people coming in uh, with, you know, additional paperwork and stuff to, to claim their, their monies. Do you find that people are often surprised that they have this unclaimed money? Oh, absolutely, when the phone calls uh, come in. Uh, people were very surprised. You know, they'll, we saw my name, you know, our name in the paper, and you know, I, I just can't believe that I've missed something. And they're delighted, delighted that you know we've gone the extra mile to try to get their monies back to them. When you see um, these people get their money back, we just saw those two check presentations, and I know you both speak with people on the phone on the day, on a daily basis who are trying to hunt down their money. What kind of personal satisfaction is it to see this money returned? Oh, it's absolutely great. I mean, you know, to to know that you were able to help somebody get you know uh, monies back to them that you know it was either theirs or you know their grandparents or their parents' money that had been completely forgotten about and, and, and many times this money comes at the right time you know right when they absolutely need money you know that's got to be refreshing absolutely. when you see that I know I've heard many stories where we've returned unclaimed property and someone says I needed a new roof and I didn't know what I was going to do um, or I'm sure Diane you've heard many of those stories before we have and and whether it be like you said a new roof or their car broke down or even a child going to college and that helps with that. So it, it is, it's, it's great to be able to participate and help, help that happen. We can't stress enough, this is a free search. People can log on to our website. All they need to do is type in their name. It costs them nothing to find out if they have unclaimed property and, and it costs nothing to claim it. So are there any other points that you'd like to just tell people, encourage them to, to check it out and check the newspaper, see if their name's in the unclaimed property bulletin or go online? Well, even if they check the newspaper and they don't see their name in the paper, they should absolutely go online and check. Uh, they, they could have something that was advertised several years ago. Uh, and they should continually check. That's a good point. Yes. The, the news bulletin that we put out periodically is only a partial list. Mm -hmm. So even if your name's not in that news bulletin, it's always a good idea to either go online. You can also call the office, correct? Right. You right. sure can. Because yeah. we have ha had that happen when they say, oh, my grandpa's name was in there last time, but it's not now. Where did it go? It is not going anywhere until someone claims it. So uh, always check the website or call in. We'd be happy to help you. Any final thoughts? Any final thoughts on just how excited you are that we are now doing unclaimed property auctions online? Oh, it's, it's, uh, it's great. I've, I've had many experiences with live auctions, and, and they're wonderful, too. I, I like those. But this actually recoups more money uh, you know, per item for the owner of, of, of these properties, and it's going to be more of a benefit to them. Uh, they're going to see more monies in their accounts when they do you know, actually get to claim these monies. Any final, final thoughts from you, Diane, just about how exciting this is? It's been a long time coming. I know the, the division has been working on this process for some time. It, it has, and I appreciate that Treasurer Purdue uh, wants to use the latest technologies uh, in, in helping the people to the most that he can, you know, get the maximum benefit and it helps us, our jobs easier. So it's just been exciting getting this rolling. <laughs> All right, Dan, Diane, thank you so much for joining us here today. We really appreciate you being here. That wraps up today's show. And remember, you can always get the latest news, information, and events from the State Treasurer's Office on our website at wvtreasury.com. Also, thank you to the staff here at the West Virginia Library Commission, keeping you informed on the Library Television Network. I'm Gina Joins with the Office of West Virginia State Treasurer, John Perdue.